Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Engine in 30K Media. Hope you guys are all doing well on a warm Mother's Day here in uh, Sacramento, California. Uh, we have a 2006 uh, Mini Cooper S here for you guys. This is a 1.6 liter supercharged engine. Um, this has been corner balanced, so the weight distribution is actually 50-50 or very close to it. Um, this car does come equipped with a six-speed manual transmission. It does have an upgraded LSD, which we will talk about later on in the review. Um, this is a, my brother's car, so big shout out to him for letting me borrow the car and reviewing it. And uh, we're just gonna be taking a tour around the car, driving it, um, doing a quick tour of the interior. And last but not least, doing an in-cabin review and just doing, give you guys a quick um, POV point of view when I'm driving the car and just maybe taking some corners, uh, give you guys some exhaust notes here and there too. So. Uh, yeah, without, without further ado, let's take this 2006 Media Cooper S out for a spin. Uh, but first and foremost, we're going to start out with um, a quick standstill review. We're going to open the hood, take a look around, and uh, if you guys have any questions, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and check out my Instagram page. Check out my brother's Instagram page uh, right here, and uh, follow his page. He does have a lot of exciting footage, and he does track the car too, so if he does in the future, we'll get some footage on there for you guys to see. But uh, thank you for tuning in and uh, let's move on to the next part, which is taking a quick tour around the car. All right, so here's a 1.6 liter supercharged engine in the Mini Cooper S. And you can see the supercharger pulley is located right here on the left side, um, kind of a little bit lower to the ground. And you always have the BC uh, fully adjustable coilovers. You can go soft or hard for rebound or stiffness. Um, you can see the two brackets right here uh, to prevent the car from mushrooming. Also right here, there are these are brand new spark, uh, spark plug wires. Um, coolant reservoir tank sitting right here. This is upgraded to a new, probably more stable and reliable cap. Off to the side right here, you can see the k and Typhoon intake system, which is carb legal. As I always mentioned in my previous reviews, do it right so you don't have to fail smog. Pay somebody. You can use that money to modify your other cars. Uh, right up here to the hood, we have the projector housings and uh, these are the HID ballast mounts which um, give it a more like brighter light output. And here's the uh, intercooler right here for the car. You can see it's, it's on some cars it's mounted towards the front of the bumper but in this case the Mini Cooper they kind of squeeze everything into the um, engine bay and just made everything fit so it's a really tight space but it saves a lot of weight. Here is a radiator which is the OEM radiator so I guess eventually in the future going forward this might be upgraded but for now it sits right here. It looks pretty clean doesn't seem like there's any leaks or anything so um, we'll take a look at that. And going up to the front of the bumper of the car you can see the turn signals here. Um, tow hook Pretty important if you're going to be tracking the car to have a tow hook installed in case something happens to you and you you get off track, somebody can tow you off. And going off over to the wheel setup, um, these are the 15 by 8 raised gram lights, 57 transcend. Um, they sit a little bit more aggressively, as you can tell by the offset, 20 millimeter offset that you know it, it allows for a more aggressive look. Um, so that's what it looks like right here. And as you guys notice here is the brake kit for the car. It has been upgraded to a Willwood four piston um, 
brick, big brake kit with a two-piece rotor and allows for better cooling. As you guys can see here, there's cool advantage mounts right over here. It allows for braking and this piece right here is separated from the rotor. So it allows for optimal performance on the track that you don't get a lot of brake fade and you can get optimal brake, late braking on the, the corners and apex through. And going over to the rear of the car, this is the uh, exhaust. It's a Miltech, a non-resonated cat back exhaust. And going over to the LZ of this car, it has been upgraded with the Quafi uh, LSD, which is gear driven. Um, so that doesn't require a lot of uh, maintenance, so you don't have to always like service it. And it does give you more handling and optimal uh, performance on the track or in the corners at high speeds. Exterior of the car, starting with the back first, uh, we have the orangey G rear wing right here. Looks really cool, kind of like reminds me of the shark fin. This is the interior of the car now, starting with the driver's seat. This is a Brid bucket seat. It hugs you pretty tightly. This car does see track time once in a while, so the interior is kind of set up for track use. Steering wheel is actually a lot thicker than I remember it less. So uh, it gives you a lot more feel and handling for the track. Here in the foot well, you can see the foot rest, the clutch, brake, and the gas setup. Um, these seem like they're racing pedals, um, give you a lot of grip. You notice there's a Sparco uh, clutch plate right there. So that seems like it's supposed to give you better grip for shifting, especially in the high speed corners or high speed turns. Towards the left bottom pillar of the car, you see the Mini Cooper logo right here. It's pretty nice. Being in the driver's seat, and uh, as you can see right in front of me, everything is, is pretty neatly laid out. Um, the thing I noticed first about the Mini Cooper is that it's a little bit different than all of the JDM cars I've driven, especially with the sped uh, speedometer sitting in the middle right here. As you guys can see, um, the first thing that came to my mind was if you're gonna be driving, right, you're gonna have to be glancing at this and then at this at the same time. But I guess you get used to it over time. Um, there's also the rev meter right here and this also displays the miles per hour on the screen right there so you kind of don't have to glance to the right too much and uh, a lot of you guys out there that do have uh upgraded parts on your car it is important to get a tune you guys all know that um, and also it's good to get a wideband and that's what this car has right here to monitor the air fuel ratio especially if you're going to be driving on the track you want to make sure that it's not running too rich or too lean right here called dinosaur mod it uh, gives you extra one horsepower, so make sure you guys do that. Going down to the short shifter, this is a Craven Speed adjustable short shifter. Um, right now, it feels pretty short, um, as you can see me moving around like this. But you guys, uh, this is a really special short shifter. I've never seen this in any of my cars. You can adjust this knob right here, and this lever can go up or down, adjusting the throw and the feel. So for example, I'm going to turn it like this, and if I pull up, the shifter comes up and at fully adjustable 100% up height it feels just like stock like pretty somewhat little slop but if I turn it this knob down here if I adjust it and push it slowly down I can adjust um, the shifter throw now it feels a lot shorter but I put it all the way down like this it's completely really stiff and notchy so Dan currently has the, the, the setup kind of like in the middle a little bit where it's like not too stiff but not too notchy which just gives it optimum feel. So Craven's Craven Speed short shifter feels pretty good in the hand but I guess we'll be driving it later to, to see what it's like but as far as I can see it now it feels pretty sturdy. The lower portion of the interior here this is all the button layouts um, right here you can see this is controlling the windows up or down this is the kind of like uh, stability assist control. Um, Dan recommends, you know, driving this Mini Cooper for a while to have this option always off because it's kind of like putting your car into limp mode, especially if you're like on the track and you're going over a bump. This is pretty sensitive, so it kind of cuts power and your car is going to like not be able to accelerate. So he drives with this off all the time. Um, you guys out there that have Mini Coopers, maybe you can chime in in the comment section below and, and let me know. Um, this is the lock, car lock. This is the headlights. And this is the other window side. So it's pretty unique, like you can't really adjust the windows 
from the door panel like some of the cars especially the JDM cars that I have but you have to do it right here so I guess if you're like a passenger you can just reach over and just go up or down and adjust it on and off AC controls are right here very basic uh, one through four four being the highest low one being the lowest climate control right here um, defroster um, up vents and uh, so so on and so forth this is the AC button right here I'm going over to the Pioneer radio um, this has a really cool feature like this whole deck actually comes out and it folds up and you can actually hook it up to CarPlay and this car is really unique uh, you can tell from some of the interior panels um, as you can see starting with the headliner this is not an o uh, OEM this has been upgraded to a kind of like a very special material that you can see I'll give you guys a quick peek pillar trim a very unique special option that was um, offered by Beamer which uh, has been upgraded in this car it's really special kind of like a soft material really smooth looking um, so you guys can take a look right here all uh, modules for the front and rear wipers right here Side uh, control module for the blinkers and the headlights. For those of you guys out there that are looking for a Mini Cooper, this is uh, some something that I wanted to point out. Um, so this is the moonroof. It does seems like it has dual moonroof, as you can see, one in the back and one in the front. But actually, the one in the front actually opens and goes all the way back. But the one in the back just kind of props up, up and down. It isn't fully open at all. So something to keep in mind. But I think it's a really cool feature and really adds to the luxury of the car um, that you have dual moonroof and you can see you know your passengers can also see out in the front or back and we're gonna open it up and you get a full view of the outside super nice and this is the OEM leather seat from uh, factory it's pretty nice leather uh, it kind of like semi bucket seat but that one's been swapped out for uh, track time use so if you guys aren't just going on the track just daily driving now this is pretty much good enough for the job you guys see this is the back view of the trunk fairly big actually and there are some basic tools here for daily driving and, and just maintenance in case the car breaks down I noticed uh, Dan also keeps towels to clean his car this is a uh, electric drill impact wrench um, some bolts uh, 3 ace drive toolkit and uh, he always carries on racing shoes in case he needs to bust them out and you know uh, try to beat some cars on the, on the street So we are back in the Mini Cooper S 2006 model. Uh, we're taking it around for a spin. Right off the bat, like I, it feels so light. The car is really lightweight. Um, it has been corner, corner balanced for uh, a 50-50 weight distribution. And everything just feels so light. Like the flywheel, when you when I pull up the throttle, it just, the revs, just, it doesn't, it, it pops really high. So, um, and the car feels really stable. I'm not even going that fast. I'm going about 45, 46 miles per hour. We're still in a local street, but um, right off the bat, just my first impressions of the car are that it feels really light. And even though I'm just not really turning at all yet, I feel like when I just slightly turn the wheel, the feedback is really direct. And when I accelerate, I can hear the, 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 the pulley, the supercharger, the, the whine. So if I give it a little bit of gas right here, you guys can hear the exhaust and, and you can hear the supercharger at the same time. Um, I guess a good thing about having a supercharged car, now that I've driven a supercharged car and driving turbo cars in the past, the supercharger it gets, gives you more feedback, like it gives you instant feedback when you accelerate. So I think that's really nice if, if you're trying to like, you know, power out or time yourself hitting that apex. You don't have to like give that split second to, for if your car is turbo, for the turbo to kick in and you you lose the rear a little bit or you lose the you lose grip um, but nevertheless so far uh, the clutch feel feels really really good like for some reason I thought the clutch would be a little bit more heavy but it's actually very forgiving and uh, I can get, I, I pretty much have the feel already dialed in just driving this car for less than three minutes now and you guys can hear the supercharger you guys can hear the exhaust it's a little bit loud um, I can hear it in the cabin which uh, I guess is it's, um, 
because the back seats are down. Oh, the back seats are down? Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, my brother is actually sitting next to me as I'm driving this, but uh, it's kind of nice because he can chime in and, and tell me things that I that I don't know about the car. But yeah, we're going to just drive it, take it uh, maybe on the freeway a little bit so you guys can hear what it's like in the city and in the freeway. Um, but right off the bat, I mean, the, the shifter, now that we adjusted it earlier, you guys noticed that I mentioned that you could adjust the, the, the leverage. Uh, you could kind of make it a little bit higher or you can raise it or you can kind of lower it a little bit which adjusts like the notchiness of the feel of the shifts so right now it's in the middle and uh, as you, I, i'm just shifting it. It, it there's no slop whatsoever it feels really really good um something i gotta get used to is when i'm looking at the front of the car when i'm looking at the the speedometer versus like the rpms like my eyes keep wanting to like go to the right to look at how fast i'm going but i keep forgetting that uh everything is not right here in front of me it's kind of like I guess the way it's designed is it's it's not too too crazy. I mean, it takes to me probably just about five ten minutes, and I got used to it. But uh, everything is pretty pretty much laid out. Um, There's uh, a I, button on top. If you push it, it changes the temp to uh, miles per hour. I see, I see. So like push it. This one? Uh, right there. This one? Yeah. Ah, oh, there we go. Yeah. So pushing that button right here to the side gives you. Uh, the miles per hour view and you can kind of change it to kilometer two if you want for you guys that are driving out there in um, you know live in, in the UK or live in Asia in Japan where the guys use kilometers um, but yeah now I just is I'm, I'm totally forgetting the fact that there's a spot over to the right side center of the console uh, but yeah we're gonna take a left turn or go straight left turn, oh, left, turn. Take a left turn right here and, and we'll get on an on-ramp uh, but the car feels really sturdy and the bucket seats pull me in really really well um, the AC is off right now. We're going to just get on the ramp real quick and maybe give a little bit of gas. This thing accelerates. This thing really... Go one more? One lane over. Okay. There's a lot of backfire in this car, but I noticed that... Um, when you power through the corner, the car, it, 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 how it rolls through the corners, it stays planted and there is like barely any body roll and it feels super stable and it's predictable. I don't have to worry about, uh, yeah. I don't have to worry about, you know, like torque steer or getting the car to point out straight. I just have to angle myself and find the, the apex and just go. Um, there's a sweeping corner right here, about 50 miles an hour. We have a little bit of downshift. We're gonna go into the corner. It feels really stable. Like I'm, I'm going about 60-ish, 68, 69, and it feels really planted. Uh, really confidence-inspiring. If you guys are out there on the track, uh, this is a really great platform to actually uh, get on the track and build because um, you don't have to worry about like doing a lot of things. I think Dan focused on like getting the car dialed in in terms of suspension setup, uh, corner balancing, and he has a really good set of coilovers. So. Uh, with that being said, you don't even need to like do anything else more. You can stop there and it'll be good. But he did it, upgrade the, the pulley, um, upgraded some other components like an exhaust intake and uh, the tires ha has been upgraded to a smaller diameter, um, going from 16 inch to 15 inch. So um, you guys know, like I guess in terms of like geometry, um, a smaller wheelbase allows the, the, the rotations to be a lot quicker. So in that case, you get a lot more um, a better acceleration it's lighter uh, and you know so on and so forth um, once one thing I forgot to mention about the car is that the brakes are super good and the car being already lightweight as it is uh, pretty much when I tap the brake the car stops on a dime and uh, a lot of things a lot of times I notice on the track especially is that the middle one, middle one? okay yeah so you're turning left. Turn left okay cool yeah, a lot of times, you know, when you're you're braking, you experience a lot of brake fade, um, and I experienced that in my 240SX on the track. You guys noticed a couple of videos back in the Button Willow, um, but in this car, even from a cold start, like you have full, uh, it's like full pressure. It's it's the brakes are already fully warmed up even when they're cold. So what what I mean by that is that when you brake, it doesn't matter if your car is like cold or not. Like you could just it's fully reliable. You don't have to worry about oh, warming it up. And then you have like a couple laps where you can just brake, and then after that it starts to fade. This car is like it's really confidence inspiring, and uh, it just feels really, really, really good. I, I really recommend uh, you guys 
get or invest in a Mini Cooper if you guys are, you know, you have a budget and you want to get something that's like fairly reliable and fairly lightweight with a good distribution and, you know, you don't have to break the bank to get the car to, um, you know, to the level where you, you, you can compete with like, you know, other high level cars. Uh, but right now, you know, we're on the freeway uh, and uh, we're just going to, you know, drive a little more and just take it around and give you guys some more. Uh, feel of what it's like if you're gonna start modifying your car and just driving it as a daily driver, which Dan is driving it um, pretty much every day is his 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 uh, DD, and uh, yeah, it feels really nice. And this bucket seat is actually pretty comfortable. I mean, I don't know about like sitting in the car for like five or six hours, but I mean, I feel fine. And it's when I'm turning, like I don't even move. And I think the combination of having a 50 weight 50 feet weight distribution with no body roll and having the seat hug you. It's like you you move you don't move whatsoever, so you don't have to worry about like wobbling back and forth when you're turning. So that's something that's really good. And the shifters throws are super short, like like I really like it. So yeah, here we go. We're gonna try and take a couple of turns. Go here. No no no. This one. Okay. All right. All right. band right here that's laid out right in front of me to monitor my AF bar uh, so in case you know like if, if something goes wrong I'll be able to know right away uh, taking this ramp right here uh, going downhill and like I said earlier no body roll whatsoever and the car hugs the road and it's super light different than driving a naturally aspirated car but you get the the power and it's instant you know because it's supercharged and it's it's not like turbo induction where you know you wait for the turbo to kick in for it to spool you gotta tune it to get the timing right for it for the turbo to kick in sooner this car just boom gas down and just accelerates so um yeah it just feels so good i guess some of the main characteristics that just it, it just popping out at to me right now is that it's really confidence inspiring in terms of the handling and the steering wheel being a larger diameter wheel and uh, I don't know if it's weight or not but it feels really 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 uh, predictive like you, you know exactly where you're going you don't have to worry about you know like um, a lot of slop or like there's too much um, like power assisted it's just direct um, you know it's it's and coming from from an S2000 to a uh, you know 240 SX this is like perfect balance of the two that I that I can give you guys some feedback in terms of driving the wheel um, but yeah it's 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 not much to, to say I mean I really really strongly recommend this car even if you're gonna drive it as a daily driver and not modify I think it's it's a hatchback feel it's um you have a lot of space in the back and it's it's like mini kind of kept their design um, classic and kind of retro style but they kind of brought it up to, um, like I guess, the 2005 standard when it first came out. They they kind of kept the retro with the modern, modern day feel. So I think that's really really nice that you get people, you know, that kind of want something like old school, but have like new school technology. If that makes any sense to you guys. Um, but yeah, it, it feels really good, and I love the car. The gas feels, the gas, the clutch pedal feels good. The brake feels super good. Like it stops on a dime. Like I'm, I'm braking right now, and it feels really good. Like I don't have to worry about pretty much brake fade. I can, as I keep mentioning that because that's a big factor, not only in daily driving but in track driving. And you know, if you're driving it long term, you know, like uh, on a road trip, you you don't want to be experiencing brake fade at all. Uh, but nevertheless, I think it feels really, really nice. Like if I could get it, you know, like a four car. I would definitely consider getting a car that's set up just like this. Look at that, it just sounds so nice too. Might as well just leave the seats down and just drive like this because who needs music when you can hear the exhaust like, and you can hear the supercharger. Gotta not get myself too carried away, you know, with the, the police around and start revving like crazy and flooring everywhere I go. But. Nevertheless, it's a, it is a great car. I mean, I've driven this car before, but I haven't had a chance to review it. And now that I have, it's it's on a whole new level of its own. Um, one last corner right here, coming up, right turn. I'm gonna give it a little bit less gas and just see. 
all. No water roll whatsoever. Super stable. The tires are super grippy. The Yokohama S drives, but they're the upgraded generational model. So I had the older S drives in my 240. This is the one up from that. It's super confident inspiring. I mean, with great tires, a big brake kit, proper cooling in the brakes, and uh, a 50 50 lightweight car. Man, what more can you ask for? Like, this car, you can take it anywhere. You know, you can take it to the canyons, take it to the track, daily drive it. And, uh, you know, just coming off of a long day from work, you know, you just hop in this car and just put the windows down, and it's a perfect car to bring a smile to your face. And miles per gallon is what matters. Remember, remember guys? But, um, yeah, I mean, this is a perfect, perfect car. I mean, you guys out there that are looking for this particular model, um, we're reviewing a 2005, uh, 2006, I'm sorry, Mini Cooper S, and I really recommend it. I mean, if you have any questions, definitely post me a comment. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you already haven't. And last but not least, thank you to my brother Dan for letting me review his car. Follow you, you guys. Uh, you guys follow him on his Instagram. Uh, I'll post a description in the comp in the description below. You can also follow him right here. Um, I'll post a his IG page, and you guys can just check out some of the, of the things that he's done to the car. I'll also be updating my website with some footages and some videos of the car. You guys can take more uh, a detailed look if you guys are actually considering buying the car. Um, I recommend it 100. percent um, no, 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 you know, uh, issue that I can think of and it's super great. It's been really reliable. It hasn't really had any issues at all and uh, I think Dan did the car right and did it a lot of justice. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video and thank you for tuning in. If you guys have any questions, please shoot me an email or send me a message. Hope you guys all have a great Mother's Day with your parents, with your moms, and uh, see you guys in the next video. Have a good one.